While we get underway, we do have this panel being filmed. We want to be able to share this with students who are unable to be here from teacher requests, so we do appreciate if you can keep the chatting to a minimum. Um, I guess we can just start right now. Is there any more? There's a couple students built there. Yeah, we'll start in just a moment. Yes. Um, this is all different grade levels that are here right now. So you can, yeah. So there might be some students that might be going into college next year that want to have some immediate concerns and questions. There's people that are still just exploring careers and want to learn more about it to get some more information. Please come in. We haven't started yet. All right. Great, so just wanted to quickly let you know that we are the Career Exploration Team. We are, it is our mission to bring more career program, programming to Newton North. And uh, that is comprised of Erin Dahlbeck, the librarian, she's unable to be here for this block. But we have Nancy, uh, Ms. Dakota, Mrs. Johnson, Mrs. Kennedy, and myself, Mr. Janqui. And we are very happy that you're here today. This is our second career panel that is focused on careers in the service field. And I just wanted to quickly introduce our panelists. And from there, the panelists are gonna spend a few minutes each talking about their background, where they got to where they are today, and the history of all the different jobs, um, provide different insight and information about what they do daily in their jobs, different um, <clears throat> characteristics and skills that are required, and kind of what the day-to-day -day life looks like for their different careers. From there, we're going to move to questions because it's important for your voices to be heard. So while you're listening, think about some questions you may want to ask them. This is a really valuable time to get information from experts in their fields that can help you on your journey moving forward. And from there, there will be some structured career panel questions that we will ask them uh, that they'll be able to share their responses with you. So please ask questions. We want this to be interactive and for you to get the most out of it. So thank you, Kurt Palinas, for being here today. Uh, we have Sabrina Viles, who is the director of the Flamenco Dance Project and the Boston Latino International Film Festival. Sabrina. We have Larry Allen, who's a school counselor and also the military liaison to Newton North. Mike uh, Aylward, he is a Boston fire uh, fighter. Justin Lau is the community outreach officer for uh, the city of Newton. Ellen Jowitz is the Family Resource Coordinator for the Jewish and Children's Service, and she has a law background as well, and may be able to answer some questions regarding that. And that's all we have for this panel. And with that being said, I'm gonna start off and pass the mic to Mike, and he'll introduce himself. Okay. Uh, my name's Mike Gerwood. I'm uh, originally from Braintree, so I'm part of the Bay State League many years ago. Coach Adams was one of my coaches in spring leagues. He's still here, I've heard. Okay, good to know. He's an awesome guy. Uh, yeah, I have an interesting uh, career path, actually, because what I went to college for and everything is nothing what I do now. Uh, I'm like most people from around here, played sports and everything in high school. I uh, did what everybody wanted to do. I uh, wanted to play in college, so I earned a Division One scholarship to go play lacrosse at Siena. I went there for four years, got out, tried to do what was in my degree, moved to New York City, worked there for a few years, found out it wasn't for me, joined the Army, was there for four years, did two years overseas, came back, and then trained to become a firefighter. I've been doing that ever since. Thank you, Mike. Good morning. Let's try. Good morning. One of the uh, important roles that I've been able to play at North High School uh, is to work with students and parents and uh, staff in, in uh, accomplishing the mission that New North High School has to make sure you as students are prepared to leave uh, the school and go out into the world and um, make decisions about how you will live your life. I started. Uh, as a social worker 
I went to a historical black college in Virginia, Virginia State College when I was there. And I came back and uh, trained for a social worker at, in the old welfare department. From that, I did experimental work with the mass experimental school system, trying to look at other ways of supporting students in, in their development. Eventually, I, I did, uh, what else did I do? Juvenile justice, I did juvenile justice and pre-release for criminals coming out of jail. And from that, it led me to Newton North. I don't know why I'm on that path, but it did. Um, so being the counselor means that uh, the staff that's here, the people that are a part of this team, are really into helping you discover all of the strengths uh, and skills and help you uh, manage the challenges that we as teenagers have to accomplish as well. So it's under the umbrella of helpful, uh, uh, what do I, uh, helping relationships. All of what we talk about on this panel is about helping relationships. And for those of you out there who really have a, a feel of valency or a connection to people, then, then this is some of the things that you can do. So thank you. We go to the mic as well. Uh, let me know if you can't hear me. Uh, so I also am uh, not the most traditional path, but uh, I am just an out of the police department. Uh, I am currently the community outreach officer. Uh, I originally started, I went to school and college in Toronto, uh, raised in Newton as well from the south side. Um, I went to school in Toronto, I majored in finance, not the most traditional. Came back to Massachusetts, and uh, was an electrical apprentice for two years. Decided that was not my thing. Uh, and then decided to take the police test, the civil service test. Um, I do have family that were also police officers. Uh, one was a uh, police officer and then moved to Boston College to be a police officer. And uh, my father was also a deputy superintendent for the Middlesex Sharks. So I decided to take this path. Uh, you know, I've always wanted to help people. That was a huge thing for me. Uh, I couldn't imagine myself sitting in a cubicle for the rest of my life. That was just me. Uh, and then I was in patrol for eight years, and then I decided uh, to take a jump and went into a specialty position, which is recently, as of a month ago, community outreach officer. So basically, I am the liaison for the police station to the public. And I set up events, and uh, I participate in panels such as this. I'll take it, Mike. Um, my name is Sabrina Rivas, and uh, I actually grew up in um, New York. The city I was born and raised in New York. I'm of Hispanic. My dad's from Puerto Rico, my mom's from the Dominican Republic. And um, I kind of, I started my journey wanting to be an actor, um, and my mom, but I was a really good student in school. And my mom couldn't, she just couldn't understand how a straight A student could want to be an actor. So I said, okay, well then I'll go to college for uh, communications. So I did and I ended up majoring in film <coughs> and television. I was very lucky because I went to Boston University. I, came, I also was the first girl to go away, so that was a scandal for my whole family because they wanted me to stay home and you know go to school and then get married. And that wasn't for me. Um, so I went to New York, to Boston University, got a degree in film, and then I was really lucky because my first job out of college, three months after I graduated, was at WGBH, um, Channel 2. You're all familiar with that, right? Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, going back to what I did. So I was really lucky. I went to WGBH. I worked there for nine years. And then after I graduated, um, I'm sorry, after I was done there, I became a freelance producer. But I also had a love for flamenco, so I ended up doing half parallel careers. I was I always say that I was a filmmaker during the day and a dancer at night. So and then one thing led to another. I work mostly on PBS documentaries, and I get my bread and butter by making industrial films. Actually, training for medical assistants, training <laughs> nursing training, and all that. Um, and the wonderful thing about my career is that I've gotten an opportunity to travel all over the world making. So it's hard, hard, hard work, but it's I wouldn't trade it for the world. And if you have any more questions, I can talk to you a little bit later about that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ellen Jowitz. I have two kids here at Newton North. Ben Lycan is a senior, and Noah Lycan is a sophomore. And um, 
I've also, I think like everyone here, I've had sort of an interesting career path that's changed. I'm not where I thought I would be when I started out. Um, let me first ask, is anyone here possibly interested in a career in law? Okay, we got one. How about a career that helps you promote social justice? Yeah. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll see, oh, anybody want to make money? <laughs> okay, so. So a law career can help you accomplish any of those things, depending on which path you want to take. Um, first of all, if you're contemplating law, you've got to go to a four-year college. And I would recommend that you not necessarily take pre-law classes, but that you take classes that help hone your communication skills, both writing and speaking, and also, probably most importantly, your analytical skills, to be able to look at a problem, take it apart, analyze it, and communicate, it, communicate your viewpoint clearly to others. Um, then you gotta go to law school for three years, and then you gotta pass the bar exam in the state where you wanna live. So it's a real long haul, and you have to be sure it's something you want. Um, when I graduated, I started out as an associate attorney in a law firm in Connecticut, and I did that for almost four years, and decided it was really boring. I was doing commercial litigation, and I was never in court, and I was working long hours, and I decided before I started to earn too much money in private practice, I wanted to make a shift and so I went into government and I became a prosecutor. And I loved that job. I worked on criminal appeals and I argued murder cases and manslaughter cases and argued before the state's highest court. And then we moved up to Boston and I did what many prosecutors do and I switched sides and became a criminal defense attorney. <laughs> and also handled appeals here in um, Massachusetts. And um, in, in both roles, I had to do a lot of research, a lot of writing, but I got to go into court and argue before panels of judges, sometimes helping set law that would affect people all over the state. And also, it was very interesting because my clients were all in prison, so I had to go to prison to visit them, and so I had to learn certain counseling skills, also learn how to behave in prison, how to relate to people, explain things to them. And then after several years doing that, I was tired and wanted to change, and I made a big jump to human services, and now I work for Jewish Family and Children's Service, and I help um, families with very young children who are in some kind of financial crisis, either experiencing chronic poverty or something's happened, and they're really struggling, and I help them get housing, or get into temporary shelter, I help them get food stamps, clothing, whatever they need, and I work hand-in-hand -hand with social workers and clinicians. Um, and I love it. It's, it's really my calling. So happy to talk about any of those if you have further questions. Great. Thank you, panelists, for sharing your introductions. I found it very interesting that the majority of you didn't know you were going to end up where you ended up, and just the journey ended up taking you there. At this time, I just wanted to open up for some students to be able to ask some questions before there's some structured questions and questions I may ask the panelists. Uh, so what are some questions that you'd like to no, and you can let me know who you'd like to direct them to as well. Yes. Um, okay. I kind of forget your name. Hello. Hello. Okay. Um, can you just talk a little bit about um, the athletic training? Because I saw that you had that um, there too, like early in college or something like that. Is that what it's like? Um, I don't remember what it said, but okay, a training so, for yeah. law. Well, one thing, I would, if you could go to Officer Law's um, slide really quickly, please. One, if you could go to Officer Law's slide really quickly. One thing I was interested in learning a little bit more about is what is that Quinn bill if I was to become a police officer? It looks like it's related to pay and you get paid more. It is. So, uh, obviously, the city of Newton pushes education. That's one of the biggest things for Newton. Uh, so the Quinn bill is an educational incentive. Uh, on top of your base pay, they used to have what was called the Quinn Bill. We have what, was, what the equivalent of it is. So for a criminal justice degree, uh, they would have, for associates, it would be a 10% increase. For a bachelor's, it was a 20% increase. And for a law degree or a master's, it's a 25% additional increase over your base pay. So uh, they obviously want officers to be well educated, uh, and they will always push for that. Great information to know. Thank you. Do we have some more questions? I have a question for your talk. I'm Mary Gitman. I'm one of the teachers here. Just wondering if you could talk a little bit about 
your hours like? Like how long do you stay at the you know, fire department? Like what does the usual call, what sort of preparation do you have to do when you guys get a call and like and you set up and prepare at all? Okay. Uh, now every town's different, every city's different for us. I've heard of a bunch of different things. Uh, talking with some people here that know the firefighters, they have different hours than we do. In Boston, we do 24 hours on, two days off, 24 hours on, four days off. Uh, our calls range from uh, medical calls, uh, we have motor vehicle accidents, uh, so we do fires, fire alarms, really anything. In, we have, when no, nobody knows who to call, we're the ones who show up. First, assess the situation, and then we determine if it's like police is needed or if like EMS, paramedic can be called, and vice versa. Um. On that topic, I'm interested to know, I feel like a lot of your professions here, students or kids growing up might have an idea that are, of being a firefighter would be really cool, or they might have a certain idea of what a police officer would be, or someone watching Law and Order, and someone, you know, going up as an attorney. So I'm interested to know, what are some things that you want, some misconceptions, and maybe some information you want these students to actually hear and know about your jobs? Uh, I'd say, uh I mean, I guess like the movies and the TV shows are pretty cool. I mean, I watched them too growing up. I mean, Backdraft's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> Nothing like that whatsoever. I mean, never a situation where you're in a fire solely with four people, that's it. I mean, if they strike a box in the city of Boston, we're going to show up with at least three engines, two ladder trucks, the rescue, and a chief. I mean, it's going to be a lot of people there to help, that, help us out. Because basically, the way to accomplish this is as a team. Uh, one of the most important parts of being on the fire department is learning to work as a team. One of the best things I think I learned playing sports growing up at different levels, and then obviously in the military, you can't accomplish anything without working together. Nobody can put the fire out by themselves. Nobody can, you know, send an artillery around downrange. Nobody can score a goal by themselves. Everyone's got to work together. There's all integrated parts that work together to accomplish the goal. Great. Anyone else want to add to that? Well, I want to ask. Uh, Fresh, a freshman, rising sophomore that in the audience, could you just raise your hands, please? Rising sophomores. All right. Uh, rising juniors. Rising juniors. Current, Current sophomores, rising juniors. That's what I do for the second semester, just to get you. Ready. Now, juniors that are rising seniors. Rising seniors. You got a couple here. Excellent. And one of one of the important tasks that counselors do in school is to look at students uh, where they are in their, their high school career. And not everyone is at the same place. So even the, the uh, event that you're attending today and that you're participating in is, a, is designed to let each of you, as you get ready to make this transition, be more informed. Uh, and with that, that information, uh, you, you get to kind of consider, once you get to senior year, and you take the naviance, because we still do naviance, uh, it begins to help you shape and frame some options for you, because this is what the panel is here to do. And, the, and my work as a school counselor, and the work that's done as a school counselor at Newton North High School, is all designed to get you where you are at this particular stage in your career. Now, what makes Newton North's work uh, so, so helpful is that uh, in some schools, uh, there's one counselor for 400 students. That's mostly in the West Coast. Uh, Luke North, you have the benefit of having one counselor for what? Uh, roughly 200. So what is the work? We form relationships. In forming the relationships, you begin to feel uh, like you can make a connection so that when the normal challenges that come up that as a teenager, that we all, in some way, had to manage, uh, you've got some support to do that. And, um, you know, for me, when I started sociology uh, uh, and then went into social work and then moved into uh, this field, it dawned on me at some point, I really like what I'm doing. You know, I like it because I went to a camp. And I love camp. How many people go to camp here? Raise your hand. Just anybody still that went to camp. You don't have to go to it now. That went to camp. Did you enjoy it? You see, I loved it. And then it dawned on me, the third or fourth year here, that I do this work because I like to make happy campers. And that's why I'm here, okay? Thank you, go ahead. Um, I, I just want to say a couple things, ask a couple questions. How, how many of you are 
Um, okay, how many of you are interested in sort of a, what I, I say is kind of a, a kind of a natu uh, not natural, um, traditional career path like doctor, lawyer, anybody? Okay. And everybody else, can I just, can you sort of just shout out what, what you're thinking of doing? Like, what, what are you do with the purple hair? What, what, what are you interested in? Anybody? Some? Just call it out. Contractor. You? Yeah, I mean, no, anybody? Does anybody know an idea, have an idea? Yes, what? Dermatology? Occupational therapy? Anyone else? Anybody else interested in being, yeah? The fashion industry. Fashion industry? Okay, great. Um, and <coughs> some of you more engineering, anything like that? <coughs> so, some of you, and it's okay that if you don't know, it's, it's, it's okay. And dermatology is rather traditional, like occupational therapy, you have to go to school, blah, blah, blah. But most of you probably won't go through like, oh yeah, the, the school. So what I'm saying to you, um, when you do go to school, I think, and you're looking for, when you're in school and you're fine that, oh, you know, I'm kind of interested in this, Take advantage of internships. And also, remember, when you apply for a job after you graduate from college, it's not so much about applying for a job. It's about the connections that you can make prior to applying for a job. So over here, you can see a panel of five of us. If any of you are interested in any of this, it's about, oh, you know, I'm interested. Can I take, can I call you? And so what you have to do is start making connections. It's called networking. And you probably have heard that. But it's super, super important because then you're in the head of, the, of a potential employer or somebody who can, you know what, I don't have anything for you, but you need to talk to somebody. And that's how you get in, okay? Because in reality, the way the world works is, yes, it's your skills and your, and hard work, hard work is, and, and but it's also, being at the right place at the right time and knowing the right people to at least get you your leg in the door. It's so, so important. So important. No matter what you do. Because even if you decide on dermatology, but you know there is that one job, and if I had that in that specific hospital, it's about who do you know to get you in the, anything you do, anything. So keep that in mind. And I know for many of you that might be like not a good comfortable space, oh God, because I know I was there at college. I have to like actually talk to people, but the more you do it, the more relaxed you become at it. But also the more having that gumption, for me, somebody like I was talking to your young gentleman who's, interested, who's filming right now, to have somebody there like, okay, I'm interested. I'm like, wow, that's so cool, I'm totally impressed. But that'll stay with me so that when he calls or anybody calls, I'm like, Oh yeah, you're the person that I met here, and I don't have anything for you, but you know what, I'll talk to so-and-so who might have an internship, or might have a part-time job or something. Super, super, super important. So the more ballsy you are, gutsy, I don't know if you can say ballsy. Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> the more impressed we'll be and say, I'll remember you and I want to recommend you. Now, that's not to say that, you, you know, you also better than show up on time, and follow through, and be punctual, and be respectful. All of that is really, really important. That will give you the extra edge. Well, it's good to know no good deed goes unpunished because I asked Eddie last minute if he was willing to film this. So just taking, I think it's a good segue of just saying yes to different opportunities and being willing to be involved. You never know what different connections you can make. I just wanted to follow up on that point because something you can do now, I know a lot of you have no idea what you want to do, but probably you're working, either getting a job that is, you know, sort of minimum wage and you're not really interested, but you need that. I wanted to get my foot in the door and I worked two other jobs to earn money. And the next summer I got hired by, from the internship for a paid job that paid much better than the other job. So you never know what will happen if you're willing to put in the hard work. And the other um, thing I would really strongly encourage you to do, whatever job you're doing now, either in the summer or during the school year, um, if you're bagging groceries, do a great job, and when you're done with that job, ask your supervisor for a written letter of recommendation. It's really important, while it's fresh in the employer's mind, to know who you are. You showed up all the time, you were friendly, you were nice with customers, 
And you can keep that, and it's just a to whom it may concern. And anytime you apply for a job, attach that to your resume and your cover letter. And it's amazing. It's much more powerful than saying you can call my supervisor from five years ago who doesn't remember you or maybe has left that job. Great. Listening to that, it seems like a lot of people could sit here and hear how successful you all are now and just think that just was handed into your laps. And you know, obviously, the theme of what I'm hearing and what I've known is that you know, it, the themes to success, one of them definitely is hard work. And there is a journey to get to where you need to be. Uh, you know, having that determination, that will to be able to use the right tools and uh, to move on is really important. Any other student questions that we can answer for you? Someone done? No? Yes. I'd like to ask the students a question. How many of you do have a job now that you're getting paid for? Okay. Did you, you have, are they going to ask, you going to ask them to tell me? To what they're doing? Yeah, what they're I was doing. curious to know how they got their yeah. job. Okay, both. And you, what are you doing and how did you get the job? You yes. Know, if you're comfortable saying that out loud. Um, so I'm a receptionist at a nursing home. Um, my grandmother lives at the nursing home. My mom was in there all the time. And I was in there with her to ask for an application to work my desk. So you were in the right place at the right time? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Would it be okay to say how much you make an hour? Just I, yeah, totally. <laughs> okay. Somebody else have a job? On the right, on the right. What do you do and how to get your job and if you're comfortable saying how much you make, inquiring minds want to know. Um, I'm a bank teller at the Village Bank. I've been doing my banking there for, I mean, I've had an account counselor for my entire life. And, um, I just, I mean, I have a really good relationship. I've always had a really good relationship with the managers there. So I just wanted to wanted their office to answer an application. And also, um, I made $16 now. Let me ask a question for you. What, what was the challenge about asking someone for the job? Do you, do you remember? How did you feel? How did you feel? I mean, I mean, I needed the job, and I just, I, I had been, I just went around to every place I could think of and asked for applications, and I mean, I didn't have a problem. Like I've never had a problem talking to people or anything. Okay. For those who have, who need to learn how to uh, engage and talk to people. Uh, that's one of the roles that counselors play here in the high school, is to help you uh, feel confident and competent in going out and, and doing your first ever job. So thank you for that. Are you 18? Uh, yeah. And is that a requirement for your job? No, I got the job, I think I got hired when I was still 16, but I didn't start until I was 17. Okay. Wow, excellent, cool. outstanding. Somebody else have a job they'd be willing to mention out loud? I remember summer I caddy at Braver, and it's, it's like, if you want a job that pays, oh my god, it's so good. It's like, <laughs> like, let's say, like, over the summer, if I carry, like, two bags, each person will pay me, like, 40 to $60 per bag, so, like, I get like $120 per, like, four hours, which is, like, four like, four hours. Four hours. <laughs>
Anybody else? I do. Um, I work at a bridal store and I am um, like I'm a sales assistant and I get sent to like fashion shows every once in a while and get to like paint out the hoop dresses for the store, which is also really cool and I um like I'm a sales assistant there so I get to like I mostly like put back the dresses but I get to like help them with the sales and then I get paid like fifteen an hour. I started out with twelve but since I've been there for about uh three years now. Um I got kind of like promoted and I get paid more now since I also get to go to these shows, I also get paid for the shows. And I also used to caddy um, in the summer about like two years ago with my best friend when I actually worked at Woodland, which I think is better. <laughs> I don't know, you can just, I think Woodland pays more, they're literally down the street, so it's kind of funny. But I think you get paid more at Woodland because I also did caddy at Braver. And I found that they were like nicer at Woodland. Are you, are you considering, um, uh, in fashion? Uh, no, I'm actually going to college for um, sports medicine and like exercise. Oh, good, good. But, um, good. but I do, if you are looking for connections, I do recommend caddying. It's a great way to make money. It's also a great way to meet people because these are very like important people that yeah. make a lot of money. Yeah. And they always ask you like, what school you go to or like stuff like that. It's a great way to like, start a conversation and get like connections out there. Mark. So we have like five or seven minutes left, and I'm really more interested in questions that students might like burning things you want to know about these careers that these lovely people do or anything they've done in the past because I have a feeling they'll tell you like the truth. So um, the reason I really think it's a good idea is because law school is really, really hard, especially the first year. And a lot of people I know who went right from college into law school were burned out, exhausted, and very, very stressed out. And I took two years off. Um, I really wanted to travel. I took a year off to do a program in Israel, and I loved being there so much that I wrote to my law school and asked if they would let me defer for one more year, and it turned out they had it over-enrolled, so they're like, sure, take another year. And so I lived in Israel for two years, and I worked. And I got up early in the morning and went to an office, and, 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 all, and so it was exciting because I was in another country, but I also got a taste of what it means to have a real job and pay rent and buy groceries, and I was like, by the time I was, went to law school, I was so thrilled to be studying again. It felt like a real privilege to be in an academic setting, a real luxury, actually. <clears throat> so I think people are just much better prepared. And, and I would say that with most grad schools, maybe not med school because it's such a long haul. But um, the other thing is I think sometimes students go to maybe law school, especially law school because they don't know what else to do. And I think it's a mistake. It's very expensive. Um, most people graduate with huge student loans. And unless you take a, a job in like a very um, high-pressure law firm, it's going to take you forever to pay off those student loans. So I think it's important to be really sure that it's what you want. And I think having that break also helps. Did that answer the question? Great question. Great response. Thank you. We have time for a couple more questions. So any other burning questions? We have our panelists right in front of you. I have a question about yeah. student testing. Can I ask you? Um, it's more direct, I suppose, to uh, Ed and Justin and Mikey. You must uh, work with and help people in sometimes very sad, horrific situations. How are you able to put that behind you in, when you go, go home in the evenings or at the weekend? Or, or, or are you able to? Do you sometimes feel you're bringing home your work with you, especially emotionally? I'll, I'll start with that. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to deal with a lot of emotional events, uh, whether it's um, deaths, sudden death, sudden deaths, um, a lot of dealing with uh, domestic abuse and whatnot, and uh, it does take a toll. Um, 
my outlet is my family and friends. That is huge for me. Uh, whether just being able to have close friends and be able to hang out, just being able to go to dinner, um, just be able to talk about it, it's big. Um, especially for my profession. Uh, you do take a lot of baggage home. You see a lot of stuff. Even in the city of Newton. You guys have been raised in the city of Newton. So have I. You guys wouldn't even imagine what I've seen. So that is huge. Having that personal connection, close friends and uh, family is big. Um, just to tie into that, to that question, uh, the counselors in the school, those events that occur outside of school that are disturbing, unfortunate, and hurtful, um, it comes into the school. And that's the other domain that school counselors work with students, not just students, adults, faculty, and, and um, members and parents. So uh, I, I needed to kind of connect with that because those things happen out there, but they come in here. That's part of the work that school counselors are, are trained to, to work with. Thank you for letting me do that. Do you want to do that? Uh, sure thing. Uh, yeah, thank you. So there's a lot of things that do happen. You have to show up to sudden deaths or, you know, certain instances where, you know, it's fortunate, especially if it involves like, a loved one, the family's there, or anything like that, or after like, a fire, and somebody's lost their whole home. It's just terrible. But you know, like I find the best thing from all this situation is try to like compartmentalize it. You know, that happened at work. This is, I'm not going to try it. It kind of affect like my girlfriend, my friends, my family, my parents. You know, just that's what it was. You can always talk with the guys and stuff like that, or all the all the people you work with, because most likely everyone's dealt with it at one point or another. Be on the job long enough. So just try to. Oh, oh, Aaron. Do they have counselors for your professions? So I was actually going to go into that. Uh, we do have designated teams uh, for certain events that will require to speak with that officer. Or it's actually a sergeant. Uh, so that is huge uh, because things can happen when you take it home and you bottle it up. Uh, being able to talk it out, whether it's with a sergeant, a designated counselor, or whatnot. Can't up. Can't take it well, I do have all the panelists' contact information, so if there's any burning questions that you think about later, obviously, as you reflect, that might happen. Um, we can contact them and get you the information you need. At this time, we just ask if there's any uh, one last final piece of advice you'd like to leave the students with uh, as we close this session. Takeaway. Takeaway. Yes. Everyone's going to take away something. And my hope is that this experience and what's been shared is something you will work on in planning for your future. There's something for you to take away. And that's part of what we're saying, but also what the students have said. Uh, and just one other thing. Also, I think in whatever uh, profession you decide to work in, with the exception that there's maybe, maybe a handful of, position of, of professions that this isn't true, but most of the time you're going to be working as part of a team like probably 98% of the time. Um, so the fact that now you are put into like groups to work and all that, it's, it's, it's the teacher's way of sort of you learning how to work with other people because more than likely, and in, in those situations there's gonna be different personalities, people you don't get along with, but um, just keep that in mind. <coughs> in only isolated cases will you be working alone. Most of the time it's team, and working collaboratively, and that, and that's how things get done. So, just wanted to have that. All right. Well, thank you, everyone.